here's how it happened, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I'm going out to my truck out the front door here at 1214 First Avenue to pick up a book that uh, Dr. Hackett and I are going to do a talk with Mike and Tom podcast coming up pretty soon. And happened to run into two of my favorite people walking down the street. I think I scared them just a little bit. Did I not scare you? You scared me. Okay, I Absolutely. didn't mean to. I did. You that door well, you opened. Know what happened? You didn't scare me. I think right. I did. You start. You. I think you startled my very skittish significant other. And okay, then let's he get a let's get a close up of him over yes. there being skittish. All right, perfect. Yeah. That, Don't that's say how boo. it looks. Don't say boo. And I, then he jumped. He lunged. Let me just use a better word. He lunged. He lunged. He did. Yeah. And then he startled me. And so then. Well, it all happened when I opened the door. So That's right. um, yes. I want to apologize for my. Uh opening of the door I think uh, I'm that's just trying it. to get out of the I building what did it. I do wrong I don't know and and absolutely there is no crime that's been committed here okay I want to make I want to make sure is that true now true statement you have a you have a background you tell us a little bit about your background because you may know more about true crime than any of us what do you think Maybe a little bit. I've, I've never dabbled in criminal law okay but uh, but I do have a background in law I have a, a juris doctorate. So. Okay, so you're you're working as an attorney, yeah. so you've probably seen some things around. Now you do have interest, and so maybe one of your interests is true crimes. Is that true? Yeah, I don't know. yeah, I do. You know, um, in, investigative reporting, true crime, and this just it's not something I've ever really talked about. I just happened to mention to my current that um, I like to listen to certain podcasts. But you know, that's current the, right there. Yeah, thank you, thank you for pointing. Yes, good. Um, so, <laughs> no, I'll, can we just I mean, say this is my first time in your studio? We talked about people second times. It's my first time here. Well, listen, I'm really first, this. first of all, welcome. Thank you are you. always Thank welcome you. here at the studio, and uh, we we have a, a a a lot of good folks coming in. Good people, good podcasts is what we say on our advertising. So. I'm, I was uh, telling you guys a story about when Dr. Hackett and the film crew, we went out on the streets of Broadway and uh, we were asking people uh, to be a part of our promotional video about podcast here. And you can find us at ColumbusPodcasting.com. So one of the things we, we, we asked, uh, do you listen or watch, because it's both audio and video, <coughs> podcast? And it, I, was, I was surprised uh, first of all, everyone was watching podcasts or listening to podcasts. Everyone we talked to, um, that that uh, that sort of confirmed some things for me. But secondly, when we asked what they liked, <laughs> a good percentage of the people said, "You guessed it, true crime." True crime. True crime. All right, now what? Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm fascinated, I've, and I've said before, I, I've read a few of those mystery novels. I've, I've you know, gone, list, got audio books, and I'm listening and so forth, but I'm not sure it's true crime. There's an entire category of true crime. So, Shatul, let me ask you, what is your definition of um, sort of the true crime genre? So I, I think, and one of the things what I said to you is, before we get into that, I think we have to really look at what I find interesting is it depends who you ask, right? Right. So I think people pull different things out of these quote unquote true crime podcasts, just like we get into the books of true crime, right. mystery, suspense. Um, if you go into like the James Patterson type right. stories, right? right? right. Yeah. We have a character, we have antagonists, we have protagonists, we have the whodunits. Right. Right. There's a plot points that move through and you kind of mislead yeah. you have the folks arc. a little bit. You arc and you're right. trying to find. Yes. And then everybody's with you. You're on it. You know who did it. And then there's that dun dun dun. Not who you thought. Wow. Yeah. Right. That kind of keeps us there, doesn't it? I it think that's what happens. It keeps us there. It keeps us right there with you. And so, but then there's that other genre of the cold case. Nobody could figure it out. Maybe you'll figure it out. Let uh -huh. us give you everything we have. You might be the one. There's so that now whole wait, era. Uh, now wait a second. Now if I, I I like it. Firstly, it's intriguing. But is it is it really an unsolved case, a cold case, and it's kind of left up to the listener to to help figure it out? Depends on what you're listening to. There are some. Okay. There are some out there that present everything that we have we're going to 
you know, whoever the moderator or the narrator or whoever is the person. I, personally, I don't like the cold case files ones. I'm just, I need to get to the end. I need you to catch it. Well, but, now, but, I had heard that. Now, somebody just let this slip, and I was listening. But they say, listen, one of the first things you need to do is go to the end of the book or the end of the story and find out who did it and then work your way back and then start over. I'm not, I'm not sure that's I, always true. I, well, not for me. As I said, you know, I think it just depends on who you are. And this comes back to, I'm a lawyer, you're a psychologist, right? That's what we do for a living. That doesn't necessarily always align with our dispositions or our backstory, right? Right. right. So I think we all bring a lot to the table in all of our years of living. Our so we history, might come up with something that no one else. Or, or not found. just for the solving of the mystery, but I mean, why are we interested in this? Um, a lot of times when I'm listening to things, you know what I really like to hear is how did the lawyers treat these stories that are involved in this? How did they deal with some of the examination of the witnesses? How did they deal with the experts in the case? How did they right. deal with the law enforcement aspect of it? Um, I, th that's just an interest of mine. Well, that, that fascinates me, too. I, I, I like that a lot because I want to know how they really checked out the evidence. What's your alibi? Well, I was at so-and-so's place at this time. Well, if it's a good detective, they're not going to take the word for it. They're going to go there. They're going to get witnesses. They're going to get up more evidence to make sure that that alibi sticks. So. Well, and what is what? Now, okay, you just hit the 30,000 foot view of that. Yep. Bring it down. If you're, if by profession you're now dealing with personalities, mm -hmm. you're dealing with, let's say, um, traits, characteristics. Or personalities, or even, as we're going to talk about on another podcast coming up with uh, the good Dr. Hackett, the personality disorder, maybe even the psychopath. Absolutely. So there's some uh, crazy characters well, out there. Well, and let there. me tell you how that works for me. Um, when I'm when I hear personalities or disorders, you know, there's some nuance there as well. And when we're dealing with dispositions of people, we're dealing with the entire people, the population. So as a lawyer, in all of my cases. I have to work and collaborate with agencies, clients, um, opposing counsel, fact witnesses, expert witnesses. Many times I can't really get to what I need to get to until I figure out how to get to that person. So right. as I'm watching, as I'm listening, more than the true crime, more than the murder itself, what mm -hmm. I'm really interested in is the victim, the victimology. Um, there's some profiling type stuff that goes on. But what right. I'm really getting to is the the stuff that would normally be redacted, the law enforcement sensitive stuff out of document productions, for example. In mm -hmm. any case, I can really hear that from a different perspective. Um, this is now a reporter who maybe through a FOIA request has gotten evidence or has gotten documents or has gotten things from the entire police file. And then if there's things that are redacted, right. the reporters who's now reporting this podcast right. knows what's protected through First Amendment privileges, okay. has now gotten through the trouble, has gotten through, has gotten to all of this trouble, done the legwork, has gotten things unredacted, and now has gotten all of this culminate, culminated, ugh, culminated. Yeah. Yes, I got you. All of it. Um, called through it, and really what I think has put together a relevant case file and is reporting it in a way that is now fun, entertaining, put it together in an hour or a two-part series. You know what? And I can drink a glass of wine and listen to it. Yeah, you know, and I think you are not the only one. Based on our little trip, our field trip out here on Broadway down in downtown Columbus or uptown Columbus, as Dr. Hackett calls it, and uh, what we found out was that people are really enjoying it. You know, um, I've also talked to some people, too, that in just normal conversation, sometimes things will come up, what do you watch? And they, they, uh, somebody inevitably will say, Dateline. And this is one of those late night shows on some channel that people watch. And uh, some person has been murdered or missing, and then they put together a, a show. And in that show, of course, it has to be entertaining, unfortunately. 
um, there's some kind of mixed message there. I'm not sure. But mm-hmm. the idea would be that they're uncovering information as they go along. And, um, yeah, the, so so Dateline is a podcast, too. I think I'm finding out here. All right, thanks. for. I just got a uh, in-the-ear uh, reminder that uh, there's, there are podcasts already out there. But, yeah, so the example of Dateline is like a true crime podcast. And so the unraveling of the information, the tracking down, and you kind of hear someone, do you believe them what, with what they're saying? Wait a minute, maybe some evidence that says, no, nah, he wasn't at that point, or it didn't say that, or it didn't happen. So somebody's lying, we gotta figure that out. Um, those kind of things, I think, attract us all. Mm-hmm. We want to solve mm-hmm. the mystery. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. need to solve the mystery. And you almost feel like you're in that seat where you can now yourself discern what's believable, not believable. And then you know what? You wrap it up. It's an hour. You go away. Yeah, go I, I got I to gotta admit that, you know, the psychology of this is that we dabble uh, just enough and we probably go up to the point and Dan Rose talks about this somewhere where we uh, we go up to the fear and the anxiety level that it doesn't cause us so much distress but it invigorates us a little bit it adds that energy to it and then we're out and there are no real consequences to and us and this is the difference between the cold case files and where there's no end right. versus the closed there's a verdict Right, a resolution right. is there's, what you're talking about. There's then? a resolution. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you said that because I, I really think that for for a lot of this, I get disappointed when someone says, "Well, we'll never know." Right, right. And I go, no, "No, no, no. We need to know. I need to know what happened to this guy or that for, you know." And so uh, that doesn't quite, you know, I, I'm a little resentful of, right. of the mm-hmm. fact that mm-hmm. you left it to me. Okay, great, you left it to me. This is what I'll decide. But the, the fact of the matter is somebody committed that crime, there's enough evidence, they go through the jury, they get convicted, and at that point we can move on with our lives. You know? Yeah, and there's enough in our real lives that's unresolved. There's enough in our day-to-day oh, reality, yeah. right, that's tumultuous yes. and angst-ridden. That's not why we go to entertainment. That's somebody else's life. Resolve it for us. That's that's right. So it doesn't cross that boundary into our yeah. own lives. We, although we have a lot of things going on, all of us do, yeah. trying to figure out how to do the best we can. Uh, we don't necessarily need all that angst and yeah. uh, worry and concern and fear and other th- kinds of things. I think, though, that we just have this built in uh, in some ways. We want to see something wrapped up and solved when sometimes you're right cold case it didn't never get solved it's mm-hmm. still there that's why they call it cold mm-hmm. and they'll come back to it uh, i've read in one of the books where they have a whole crew that does nothing but cold cases and they come back and try to wrap up and put things together they'll they'll even go as far as interviewing people and digging up information and going forward just try to resolve the case you know another another thing that comes to mind that a lot of people are interested in along these same lines is, is um, stories from things like the Innocence Project, mm-hmm. where there's people on death row. I don't know if you all have heard of it, right? Where um, they've been either wrongfully convicted right. or have been there on death row for a long time, and then there's lawyers who devote so much time and energy where they pick one case among thousands, right? And uh, where they truly believe in this, and with the advent of DNA. Um, being able to prove or disprove someone's guilt or innocence, they've been able to really put so much energy into appeal after appeal after appeal, and then people after 20, 30 years get proven innocent. And finally get released from prison. But then what happens, right? That's not always the end of the story. And there's a lot of people who are interested in that. I mean, not necessarily me, but but then there's the aspect of people with disabilities um, you know, um, who are kind of on that line with intellectual disabilities who may have been sentenced to death row. Um, right, because they, they, well, there are probably a lot of reasons. One, they couldn't afford, uh, you know, high-powered attorney and, and doing that in some cases. They probably maybe couldn't uh, really uh, present like they're innocent. Maybe their disability money, you know, sort of help people convict them just by their that disability there could be a number of things that happen but but i'm i'm also wondering about this 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 psychological piece of it where you know we'll talk later about psychopaths but the idea that you just don't have any empathy 
and you getting over on people and that's not a problem for you and you continue to cause problems and crimes and do what you need to do well and then there's that notion related to that the what we were just talking about the false confessions there's a read there's a technique right. called the read technique that's been now disproven but a lot of false confessions come into that era and that's a whole nother genre i think you guys could probably delve into another day it would be very interesting not necessarily true crime but this is when right. we get into fbi folks right and mm -hmm. and these techniques and the guy who the read technique is named after has himself said do not use this technique it's no good we get a lot of false confessions with this and it just goes down this other road i would love to hear yeah y'all's take on that's kind of that's kind of interesting I, i'm not i'm not familiar with that but the idea that you uh, get enough pressure or you're in the right setting that you get somebody to confess based on some weakness or some issue that they have and you kind of push that and they confess and then the cops raise their hand and we're done we got it <laughs> there Close we go it. anyway and, uh, i would love to see you guys Look into that. I would love to hear your take oh, that, on that it, would be and good. just do a whole day thing on that. Well, I'm I'm just glad you guys showed up in the uh, in the studio, or actually on the street, and I drug you in, uh, <laughs> if the truth be known. But but the idea of true crime um, as a podcast here, we've developed a number of podcasts. Uh, on Tuesday, we had the Vault TV crowd in here. Those guys are in the hip hop community, and they're doing some cool things. We uh, just got their podcast finished. We got. Dr. Sean Cruzen, the Coca-Cola Space Science Center director, talking about coming up, by the way. Um, and I hate to put a time stamp on this, but November 11th, which is next week as we record this, uh, there's a transit of uh, Mercury. So Mercury's going across the sun. They're going to track that. And he talked about that for a while. Uh, the Got Therapy podcast. And here we go. We talk with Mike and Tom, who's our executive producer today. Dr. Hackett, good to have you in the studio. And uh, I think we're doing a lot, but I think we're going to continue to do things around what people are listening to because we are Columbus Podcasting. That's what we do. We want to invite people in. We want people to come by and stop and uh, get, get involved with us. Talk about the things they want to because after all, podcasting is just a conversation. It's about things of interest between us. So um, I'd love to see Columbus Podcasting put on a true crime podcast. So if anyone's out listening – or you know of anyone, in the sound of my voice, that are interested in the true crime podcast, uh, get in touch with us here at Columbus Podcasting, and we'd, uh, we'll get something going for you um, and keep that a, a, maybe a regular series about true crime. Do you, do you have a case, though, Tool, that, that you um, – no, no, not a case that you've worked on, but maybe – because uh, that wouldn't be right. But, but the idea of a um, – a true crime that you kind of remember is one, and give us a little highlight of a true crime that uh, that kind of kind of comes to mind. And I may put you on the spot. I can also do that with Greg over there. Greg, um, are you a true crime enthusiast? Uh, I'm not, but uh, I have been told when I make family dinner, that's a true crime. That is a true crime. You know, I can always <laughs> I can always count on one thing, and I know. Dr. Conklin, Dr. Jeff Conklin and I have been working on it for years, trying to help this young man with his joke telling. Uh, so far, we haven't made any uh, movement whatsoever, and there's always a joke that just a little off the mark that always comes in. And so, Greg, we appreciate that. But uh, not a true crime, uh, but you could be. You could be a, a, a listener and enjoy true crime. No? Um, so I'll be one of those people that says, no, when I listen to podcasts, I don't listen to true crime. Um, what what do I listen to? That's uh, Here we go. This I think I listen now. to uh, just a smattering of things just uh, for all over. I'm all over the map. I don't really have a uh, – maybe I'm not – developed enough to. well uh, no i think i think uh what you're describing is something and, and i'd certainly identify with uh, with that because i'm listening across the board to these podcasts uh -huh. so there are the uh the national ones there there's there's just one that are sort of localized to a particular interest of mine uh, I had a podcast on the screen just before we started about how to improve your audio techniques oh, so okay uh, any interest that you have and Dr. Hackett said this, too. Any interest, there's something for you out there in the podcast world. And, as a matter of fact, we'll go even further. And we, We're on YouTube at Columbus Television, so look that up. 
But the idea is that if you have something you have to fix, uh, you have to replace, you have to do some repair work, uh, yeah. you can find a video on it. That is true. If that faucet is leaking, there's a video on your model, your brand and model sure. of the faucet that's leaking, and somebody's going to help you out. Actually, I can attest to that. This last Sunday, I was watching the video on the bathroom moan faucet that leaks. Yes. So, just to I make sure there, I, I just said, I threw that exactly out randomly, but I'm not kidding. You. I, I absolutely uh, threw it randomly, it's but true. that happened, and that that is it's very true um, in so many cases. So, uh, we're we're trying to get the videos out and get people in the conversation about it. But I know other people will just use that to kind of zero in on something they need information about is on demand learning. And then what happens is that uh, with the podcast, it's more the entertainment. I, I'm mm -hmm. curious about what people think about certain topics, what people are really, uh, what their background, how it comes out and personalities and just interested in human behavior in general with a couple of three, four um, degrees and in interest in these things a little yeah. bit, but it's, it's fascinating that uh, podcasts are uh, coming on real strong. So we're going to try a true crime podcast. So what you two have done today is really bring us to uh, uh, realizing that with your interests, Shatul, not so much your husband, but uh, <laughs> with the true crime genre, that we need to know more about it and see if we can get right here in Columbus, Georgia, a true crime podcast. What do you think? I think that would be fantastic. You know, I think that... Um, I can't give you a story of a, of a case that I really, really liked. I can tell you this, though. Um, I think that something you could do immediately that I think would pique a lot of people is what you're talking about doing right now. Start digging into these personality disorders, and I'll tell you why. When yes, I'm getting right, my right. hair did, when yes. I'm out in public talking to people, you know what I hear a lot about? Everybody has taken a Psychology 101 class yes. that's ever gone to college, even yes. for a little bit. Right. And everybody knows somebody that's got some sort of a personality disorder. Oh, and it's, ne it's never them, by the way. If you it's may ever somebody. notice, it's always somebody else. I'm <laughs> it's everybody knows somebody that is a blank. Fill it in. Yes. And I, what if you started doing something like that? I think that's where you're really delving into the beginnings of what we're calling true crime. Because in all of these real life stories, there truly is somebody, diagnosed or undiagnosed, but there right. is truly somebody with a massive um, personality disorder or some sort of a mental illness that's untreated yes. that's really dealing with this. Yes, Many of these right. deal with either suicides or apparent suicides that end up not being suicides, and that's the dum-dum-dum kind of moment, you right, know, right. when all the family is really finding stuff out about people. Well, but, and people think they know other people much better than they do. Yeah. Um, so they attribute things to other people. We call it projection. You kind of yeah. project something in you onto another person. But the idea of this attribution that we give some others this, this bad stuff that we're not able to sort of manage in ourselves. But um, the Cougar Dunning effect is one of the videos yeah. that we talked. About. <laughs> I would we, love we did that. to hear we, that. Well, we did a we did a, a video on it, uh, uh, got therapy with Dan Rose on iTunes on YouTube, and and uh, what what we were talking about is that we rate ourselves much better on average across the board on everything driving whatever you <laughs> whatever you can find, but um, not so much on everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, look at all those bad drivers out there. Oh, but not me, not right? Me. Mm. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of that that working. Yeah. But I, I hear what you're saying in in the the notion of personality, uh, the personality quirks. But not only that, that they trend toward something more dangerous or something more antisocial, and in and in the personality disorders like the psychopaths and the antisocial personalities and those guys that really commit horrible crimes well not just but what yeah. we're seeing though is that there's also a continuum there's a range where people trend toward some of these very dangerous <clears throat> sort of behaviors and attributes and they'll make your life miserable well, that's because those, they're out to yeah. do something for themselves and they have they can't regulate that in many ways no and you know what though truly it's not so much these psychopaths that you see committing the more insidious crimes you know the psychopaths 
you, you you see them, you deal with them, or you don't. But it's not so. It's more of these latent narcissists that you see often that are making people's lives hell. That's what I think is the train wreck that you see. Ninety percent of the population that that are just they can't turn their head away. It's like, oh my god, that sounds like you know so and so that I know. Right, it's we that, all can identify. It, it's the identification yeah, that I think it's that almost that voyeurism that's out there. If you're really looking for that immediate uh, audience, you know, I'm all. I, it's almost like you've got it at your fingertips between the two of you. Right. You could be talking about that's, it. That's that's it. Well, I appreciate that, and I, the idea that. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, don't we all need to be? And I've been I've been trying to wave this flag, and uh, we, uh, Dr. Hacken and I talked about it on Talk with Mike and Tom podcast. That uh, we got to show some more empathy. We've got to look at it from the other person's point of view. We've got to take inventory on ourselves. Uh, let's try to be a little more gracious. Let's try to be a little more kind. Let's try to connect with other people. Give people the benefit of the doubt. Okay, <laughs> do that. That's by a the nice way. day. Podcast. Do do that. But That's right. Keep that one. But then we've got the other folks who are sort of pushing our buttons, and and people know. And and with the with the lack of conscience, no conscience, the lack of of the ability to empathize and see it from another person's point of view, the psychopath, which we're going to talk about coming up on this podcast, uh, is is really uh, something we should all know. We should know about it because you may come in contact with that person and what do you do? Because they may take advantage of you, cut by ties, the way. Yeah. yeah, cut and run. There we yeah. go. All right. Well, well let's uh, thank you so much, Atul, for coming in. Greg, thank, thank you, you guys so for being fun. here. Thank you. Hey, man, uh, this is an awesome place, by the way. I've well, never seen it. It's my first time on a microphone. I can hear myself so crazy. All right, right, there we go. I That's so uh, cool. well, it's, 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 it it's been great having you guys in here today. I want to thank uh, also Dr. Hackett, our executive producer, making this thing work behind the scenes. Thank you. And uh, listen, you guys come back. I need to see you both again in the studio. And until then, we'll see you next time. Thank you very thank much. Thank you.